unforgettable family vacation is waiting for you. Great Wolf Lodge. There's no time like a Great Wolf time. Come to the Great Wolf Lodge. Start planning at GreatWolf.com. Great Wolf Lodge, known as the place families can have a howling good time, has been a part of everyone's childhood, including me. This popular hotel chain has so much to offer for anyone of any age, like the Scoops Kids Spa, the Northern Lights Arcade, the Magic Quest Scavenger Hunt, and of course the giant indoor water park, the best of them all. But there's another thing Great Wolf has to offer, and that's the mascots. These larger-than-life woodland creatures have represented the company for over a decade, adding just a little more entertainment to an already fun place. So why not talk about them? So in this video, I will be talking about all of the Great Wolf Lodge mascots from over the years. From wolves, to bears, to raccoons, to a squirrel? This is the history of Great Wolf Lodge mascots. Before I talk about this wild wolf and his friends, I'm going to go over the history of the place they represent, Great Wolf Lodge. Now the history of Great Wolf Lodge is a little complicated, but I'll try my best to summarize it. Great Wolf Lodge originally started out as Black Wolf Lodge and opened in Wisconsin in 1997. It was created by two brothers, Jack and Andrew Waterman, who were also the owners of the Noah's Ark Water Park, also located in Wisconsin. In 1999, the Great Lakes Company purchased Black Wolf Lodge and decided to rebrand the company into Great Wolf Lodge. In 2001, a second location opened under the name Great Bear Lodge, but after the third location opened, all of the hotels were renamed Great Wolf Lodge. Today, there are around 20 Great Wolf Lodge resorts all across the United States and Canada, with more to come in the future. But going back a little bit, this is where our mascot story begins. Lodge, Wisconsin Dells' premier indoor water park resort, featuring the all-new Howlin' Tornado, a six-story funnel of extreme tubing. During our Great Thrill Getaway Special, a spacious family suite is just $169 a night. Call 1-800-559-WOLF or visit GreatWolfLodge.com. Part of America's largest family of indoor water park resorts. The first mascots of Great Wolf Lodge were introduced around late 2001. They were known as the Cub Buddies, sometimes referred to as the Cub Club, named after the little activity rooms found at every location. The characters included Yellowfeather the Native American Girl, Biko the Bear, and the main and only one to still exist today, Wiley the Wolf. For the purpose of this video, I will start with Wiley first, before I talk about the other characters. Going over Wiley's design, you can definitely see how old this design really was. He kind of looks like he was drawn by a child, which was probably what the company was going for. This goes for the other characters, too. He's a brown-colored wolf with long pointy ears and fluffy cheeks. His eyes are also yellow and he's got freckles on his muzzle, along with a large black nose. In terms of his outfit, he's got a green and yellow baseball cap, a blue shirt with the letter W on the front, and the name Wiley on the back. He also has red and green striped shorts and green sneakers. But now that I think about it, I feel like I've seen this design somewhere before, but I just can't put my finger on it. Yeah, it's safe to say Great Wolf Lodge may have taken some inspiration from a certain rodent. But then again, this was the late 90s or early 2000s, and pretty much everyone wore skater gear. And yes, Wiley did skateboard in some artwork. Shortly after the cartoon design was introduced, a walk-around mascot costume was created. This costume is largely the same as the original 2D artwork, but with a few differences, such as having an overall darker fur color. Unfortunately, it's unknown what company made this costume. People often refer to this Wily costume as ugly and creepy, which I can totally see why, but to me, he really isn't that bad. Although, I've seen much worse looking mascots. 
As for variant outfits, Wiley doesn't have too many, but he does have a few. Here he is wearing these red pajamas, here he is wearing orange variants of his shoes, and here he is wearing... Uh, what is this? Pajamas? A Halloween costume? I'm not sure what this is. Also on a side note, Wiley was often seen without his hat, meaning the hat was most likely attached with Velcro. Finally, I found this video where Wiley's outfit appears to glow in the dark. Not sure if it was always like that or if it was just for this video. His pants also had flashing lights, but this was probably due to a glow stick being in his pants. Wow, that line sounds so wrong. Why did I write it like that? Over the years, this version of Wiley did many things either at the resorts or out in public for promotional reasons. At the resorts, Wiley was always seen walking around and meeting all the guests who were visiting, but he was also seen in the evening when it was story time in the lobby. Wiley was also seen at some of the restaurants, but this wasn't a character dining experience. He just happened to be at the right place at the right time. But some locations did offer character dining. There were even a few occasions where Wiley was in the water park. And if anyone's wondering, no, he didn't get in the water. I know wolves can swim, but Wiley can't. He's not waterproof. Wiley also did several promotional events outside the resorts, such as visiting outdoor festivals, events happening nearby a Great Wolf location, and even a few baseball games where on one instance he played musical chairs with other mascots and was very close to winning. Moving away from the mascot costume, Wiley was also represented in other forms throughout the resorts. For example, he and the other Cub Club characters could be found on the now-defunct Cub Club website, as well as appearing on coloring and activity sheets. Some other ways Wiley was represented were the wet floor signs, which are actually still used to this day, this really creepy plush toy, and this even more creepy looking statue. And that's pretty much it for this version of Wiley, so now let's move on to the other members of the Cub Club. The next character to talk about is Biko the Bear, who is basically just Wiley but a bear. I mean, he literally wears the exact same outfit as Wiley but with different colors and designs. He wears an orange and green baseball cap, a yellow shirt with a B on the front and Biko's name on the back, blue shorts with different color triangle designs, and orange shoes. Wait, orange shoes? I feel like I've seen those before. Those are the same shoes Wiley wore in that one image I talked about earlier. Just like Wiley, Biko received a mascot costume shortly after his debut. And I pretty much feel the opposite when it comes to which Biko design is better. With Wily, I thought the costume was better than the cartoon design. But for Biko, the cartoon design is still better than the mascot suit. That's not to say the mascot suit is bad. There's just something... off about it. Maybe it's the lack of fluff the cartoon design has. Or maybe it's because he doesn't really look like a bear. He honestly looks more like a chipmunk, or a gopher, than a bear. Probably due to his head not having much brown details. His eyes are also really weird looking, so is his mouth. There's really nothing else to talk about regarding Biko. He pretty much did everything Wiley already did, like story time or other hotel activities, as well as having his own creepy doll. Although he didn't attend as many outside events as Wiley did. But that makes sense since he is a secondary mascot. One thing Biko did have was the 3D Theater was named after him. It was called Biko's 3D Virtual Reality Adventure Theater, and it was just a standard 4D theater that shows short interactive films. Today, it is referred to as the Howlywood XD Theater. Get it? Howly World? Like Howl and Holly World? And whatever. The last main mascot of Great Wolf Lodge at this time was Yellowfeather, a young Native American girl. Unfortunately, there's not much information on her as she was the least popular of all the Cub Club characters. She doesn't even have a walk-around costume created. She wears a green shirt with orange details and a yellow feather design on the front, as well as purple shorts with a Native American design on each side of the pant leg, and she also has her hair in pigtails. Aside from the cartoon design, she had a few statues made as well as being the only Great Wolf Lodge character to receive an animatronic. 
Did you know Great Wolf Lodge had animatronics? Well, they do. However, I'm not sure if the Yellow Feather animatronic is actually the same character as the Yellow Feather featured in marketing. This Yellow Feather wears more of a traditional Native American outfit and is only exclusive to the Clock Tower animatronic show. Before I move on to the next batch of Great Wolf mascots, there's one more character created that I want to quickly mention since he was also created during this era. So around Christmas time, Great Wolf Lodge holds a holiday themed event called Snowland, and during that event you can do several Christmas themed activities. Along with meeting Wiley and Biko in Christmas attire, you can also meet Santa Claus and a brand new character, Rowdy the Reindeer. Rowdy was only available to see at this event. After New Year's, he wouldn't come out for another full year, but he did get a plush. Now at first glance, Rowdy might look like a certain other red-nosed reindeer. However, they're not actually related. At least I think they aren't. Let's quickly go over the costume of Rowdy. Let me just say, I'm not a fan of this costume. It just looks weird. The colors are completely off with them being much darker than they're supposed to be. I know Wiley had a similar issue, but it's very apparent with this costume. The head sculpt isn't horrible, it just looks off. And not much like a deer. Especially with how weird the antlers look. I'm not too bothered by the body being large, but the hands are lacking hooves details. Even though the feet have them. But yeah, overall a weird costume, and I'm not the biggest fan of it. Maybe that's why he was retired after 10 years. So the Cub Club characters were used for about 8 years before being retired in 2009. But really, Biko was the only one fully retired, while Yellowfeather stayed as an animatronic in the Clock Tower shows. And as for Wily, well, the company had some big plans for him. together. It'll be worth the wait. Great Wolf Lodge. Everybody in. Great Wolf Lodge is the perfect place for family fun this summer. Visit GreatWolf.com today. In 2009, Great Wolf Lodge decided to go in a completely new direction with their mascots. This resulted in the Cub Club characters being retired, except Wiley and a whole bunch of new characters were introduced. They were referred to as the Great Wolf Kids. And just like the last chapter, I'm going to talk about each member individually, starting with the main mascot, Wiley. So since Wiley was the only original Cub Club character to stick around, he of course had to go through some changes. And let's just say, the changes were pretty major. He was no longer a slightly off-putting Chuck E. Cheese knockoff, but now a slightly off-putting Forest Ranger. His fur was now a very light brownish-gray color, and his face was white. His nose and eyes were made smaller, and he's even got eyelids, which makes him a little creepy. They also changed his eye color from yellow to green. He traded in his baseball cap for a large orange ranger hat, and now sports a red bandana with a tan ranger outfit and orange shoes with green socks. Huh, interesting. And unlike the last costume, his hat cannot be removed. Along with a new design and costume, Wiley was given a personality and character traits. He is the leader of the Great Wolf Kids and is kind but also very adventurous. Wiley's goal is to be a friend to all who wish to explore. He is also outgoing, hopeful, inspirational, and courageous. He loves to howl and is also a talented dancer, and takes care of the environment too. Some other fun facts about Wiley is he's forever 10 years old, and his birthday is on February 5th. His favorite color is green, his favorite activity is hiking, and his favorite holiday is Earth Day. One more interesting thing to mention about Wiley 
is that he was in an episode of the TV series Undercover Boss. Well, actually, he was supposed to be. In Season 2, Great Wolf Lodge CEO Kim Schaefer went undercover and worked a few positions. One of those was wearing the Wiley costume and interacting with guests. And while the full episode is available on YouTube, the Wiley scene was cut from the episode and made an online exclusive, which is no longer on YouTube. It is now lost media, for now. Which is sad since I wanted to include some bits of it in this video. The only thing that survived from the clip was the screenshot. Hopefully the clip resurfaces on YouTube one day, but for now I'm going to take a break from Wiley and talk about some of the other characters. The next member of the Great Wolf Kids I'm going to talk about is Violet the Wolf, who is Wiley's sister. Violet, just like Wiley, is a light brownish gray wolf and has purple eyes. She wears a purple shirt with a V on one side, khaki pants with a Scoops ice cream themed belt, and a pink bow on her head and around her waist. She also wears a pair of once controversial but now very popular pink and purple Crocs. Oh, did I mention she had painted fingernails too? That's something you don't see on every mascot. A few variant costumes Violet received included a Snowland scarf and mittens, and for the howl o -ween event, she got a pink tutu, fake wings, and a butterfly wand. Speaking of mascot, when Violet got a mascot costume made in 2010, several Great Wolf Lodges had huge events and parties to celebrate her introduction, and some of these hotels went all out for Violet. For example, the Kansas City location had Violet arrive in a hot air balloon and was driven to the resort in a limo. The location in Mason, Ohio, which is actually the one I visited, had Wiley and Violet go to Kings Island, which is located right next to the resort. It's a shame the other characters didn't get this treatment when they were introduced, but oh well. As for Violet's personality, she's kind, happy-go-lucky, and often wants to be the center of attention. She is always ready to play with a friend, and she is generous to all. Her favorite color is Violet, of course, and her favorite traditions are birthday parties, and she loves gardening. Her favorite season is spring, and her birthday takes place on May 25th. Violet is also the primary mascot of the Scoops Kids Spa, found at many locations. This is where she was found most of the time, and did meet and greets here. However, most of these are starting to get phased out, so Violet now meets in the main lobby along with the other characters. Speaking of the other characters, one more mascot was introduced at the same time, who also became a mascot at the resorts in 2010. The next Great Wolf Kids character to receive a costume was actually not a wolf, but rather a raccoon named Oliver. Oliver is just a typical raccoon in terms of his design, but he does have green eyes and he wears glasses, which is kind of funny since raccoons already look like they're wearing glasses, or burglar masks but I can assure you Oliver is no burglar. In terms of his outfit, he wears a similar hat to Wiley, but it is different. He wears an orange shirt with a tan vest, brown shorts, and camo-colored shoes. For alternative outfits, he once donned a pair of solar glasses during the 2017 solar eclipse, but in October for Halloween, he dresses up as a wizard. I mean, he already does kind of look like Harry Potter. Oliver's personality is pretty much what you think it is. He is very knowledgeable in science and technology, and is always full of information. He enjoys playing with computers and gadgets, and he even created some of his own. His birthday is on August 22nd, his favorite color is brown, and his favorite activity is the Magic Quest scavenger hunt. That's why he wears a wizard outfit during Halloween. You can also find Oliver near Magic Quest a lot too. While on the topic of activities, Oliver actually has not one, but two attractions named after him. The first is called Oliver's Mining Company, which is just a standard gem mining attraction most places have. They just put Oliver's name on it. They did make this cool animation to promote it on social media. More on this sort of thing later. The other attraction is Oliver's Time Challenge, which is where you can compete in a challenge where you have to press buttons when they light up. 
Yeah, it's kind of lackluster in my opinion. Before I move on to the rest of the characters, let's go back to Wily for a little bit. In 2013, along with three new characters, Wily got a minor update to both his design and costume. His ranger outfit was downgraded to an alternative costume, while his standard outfit was now a red shirt with a paw print design, khaki shorts, and he no longer has green socks or a hat. With a new outfit, I can now talk about all of Wily's alternative outfits. Here he is in a snowland scarf and mittens. Whenever a new Great Wolf Lodge begins construction, a huge event is held, and Wily is given a construction vest and hard hat, made just for him. And finally, for Halloween, he wears his ranger outfit, but it now has a new bandana and hat that's supposed to represent a cowboy. But really, I don't see any difference. And finally, he has the stylish black jacket. Alright, so now I'm done talking about this version of Wily, so we can move on to the next three characters that received mascot costumes. The next character to talk about is Brinley the Bear Cub. There's really nothing too noteworthy about his design. He's pretty much just a brown bear with a tan face and orangish brown eyes. He wears red shorts and carries a red backpack. In terms of his other outfits, I could only find one, and it's him wearing a construction vest during construction of a new Great Wolf Lodge. Since Brinley is a kid, he doesn't have a hard-to-understand personality. He is an adventurous young bear cub and loves to laugh and play all day. He likes to read, his favorite color is red, and his favorite season is spring, and his birthday is on September 10th. Brinley is also the primary mascot of the Cub Club area of the resort, which is kind of like a small daycare activity room, although he really doesn't do meet and greets in here. He does them out in the main lobby along with the other characters. But I should mention this since I know somebody will ask. Brinley is not related to Biko. Yes, they are both bear mascots from Great Wolf Lodge, but they are not related in any way. At least I don't think they are. The second to last character to talk about is Sammy the Squirrel. Just like Brinley, there's nothing really noteworthy to mention about her design. She's just a brown squirrel with tan parts and blue eyes. She surprisingly wears no clothing except for a pair of red and white shoes, and she carries around a camera. Sadly, I wasn't able to find any variant outfits for Sammy anywhere online. Sammy's personality goes as follows. She's creative and talkative and enjoys taking pictures of her friends having fun. Her favorite color is light blue, her favorite season is summer, and her birthday is on July 6th. Oh shoot, that's only a few days from when I record this. Happy early birthday, Sammy. She is also the mascot of Great Wolf Lodge's Shutterfly Service, which is like a photography book thingy. She also has her own attraction called Sammy's Flip Flop Workshop, which is where you can design your own flip flops. That's pretty cool. The final Great Wolf Kids character to get a mascot costume is Rachel the Raccoon. Rachel is the younger sister to Oliver, so she looks pretty similar to him, except her head is much smaller, and she definitely has more cartoony details than Oliver did. She also has blue eyes instead of green eyes. She wears a red shirt, a brown belt, a jean skirt, and a pair of red and white shoes which look very similar to Rockstar Chuck E. Cheese's shoes. Unfortunately, just like Sammy, Rachel doesn't have any alternative outfits. But I did find this one picture of her wearing a firefighter helmet. Oh wait, she did have an alternative outfit. It was the Snowland outfit. Oopsie, forgot to mention that. Rachel's personality is pretty basic compared to some of the other characters, but she is outgoing and very loyal to her friends. She enjoys gardening, cooking, hiking, camping, fishing, exploring, and going to birthday parties. She's also a bit of a gamer, too. She's best friends with Wiley, which makes total sense since they share some of the same hobbies. Her favorite color is orange, and her favorite season is fall. Her birthday is on November 12th. Wait a minute! She has the same birthday as me! No, really, she does! I never thought I would have a mascot on this series to share a birthday with me. 
That's crazy. So I have some sad news. For anyone wanting to meet Rachel Raccoon, you can't. At least not easily. Rachel is the only Great Wolf Kids character to have their mascot costume retired. The cartoon Rachel is still used sometimes, but the costume isn't. I think the company is slowly trying to phase out Rachel. Come on, Great Wolf. You have a character that has the same birthday as me, and you just end up retiring them. Hashtag justice for Rachel Raccoon. But now you're probably wondering, why are they phasing Rachel out? Well, I don't know the real answer. But I have a few theories for why she's not used anymore. Number one, she's not as popular as the other characters, which kind of makes sense, but I don't believe that. She does have a few fans. Number two, having two raccoon characters at a great wolf lodge isn't necessary. This sounds reasonable. I mean, Oliver has more things to his name than Rachel does, so maybe the company only needs one raccoon character. And number three, this one sounds reasonable. Rachel was the mascot for the Great Wolf Resort Camp Critter Bar and Grill, which has largely been phased out of most resorts. So possibly Rachel went down with the restaurant she represented. Whatever the reason is, Rachel is now no longer doing meet and greets at Great Wolf Lodge. The only location known to still have Rachel is the Niagara Falls location. Okay, I have now talked about every Great Wolf Kids character that had a mascot costume. But did you know that there are still some characters I didn't mention? That's right, there's even more characters that don't have costumes that are a part of the Great Wolf Kids character lineup. So let's talk about them. First, there's Wayne the Woodchuck, W-A-Y-M-B. He's one of the newer characters as he was introduced around 2014 or 2015 in the interactive scavenger hunt game, Clubhouse Crew. He's pictured as a villain at first, but later it's revealed to be a big misunderstanding as he just wants to join Wiley and his friends. Spoiler alert, he does that at the end. Speaking of the Clubhouse Crew game, this is one of the few times the characters got to talk. And let me just say, Wiley's voice is terrible. Here, take a listen. Got that? Let's try it one more time. Stop, stop, clap, clap. Oh! That sounds terrible. He sounds like a robot. Everyone else sounds fine, it's just Wiley who sounds bad. I mean, he's not the only main character of a series to sound bad, while everybody else sounds normal. Looking at you, Paul Rudish, Mickey, or Matt Vogel's Kermit the Frog. Awful. Next is Sprinkles the Bear, who is the mascot of the Bear Paw restaurant found at the hotels. He is a trustworthy bear wearing a chef's outfit, and is the main chef of the Great Wolf Kids. He may not have a costume, but he does have a statue of him found inside the restaurants. Next is Spex the Owl, who is the secondary mascot of the Cub Club, alongside Brinley the Bear. He is a great horned owl who is, you guessed it, very wise and knows a lot of things. Just like Sprinkles, he might not have a costume, but he sure does have a lot of statues. This character is actually a returning character from the old Cub Club crew. It's our old friend Rowdy the Reindeer. He now sports a design that is literally just Rudolph. Like honestly, I can't tell the two characters apart. I'm surprised they didn't update the costume since they still use this thing, even though he's outdated. And last but certainly not least are two characters who might just be the most important characters in the entire Great Wolf Lodge lore. Those characters being Tooth and Nails, the Beaver Brothers. Tooth is the one in green and is a hard worker who gets the job done, while Nail is the one in yellow who is more laid back. They're pretty much the Great Wolf versions of Chip and Dale. Now why did I say they were important? Well, it's because these two are the ones who built Great Wolf Lodge and came up with the concept in the first place. If it weren't for them, Great Wolf Lodge wouldn't exist. Sadly, despite how important these two are, they don't have any mascots made of them, but they do have a ton of statues made in their likeness, some of them creepier than others. Now that I've talked about all the Great Wolf Kids characters, I want to quickly mention some of the things these costumes did during their lifetime. 
So really, they did all the same things the older Cub Club characters did, like doing story time in the evening, and of course doing meet and greets. But they also officially introduced character dining for breakfast, since they had more characters it made more sense for this to exist. One of the cooler experiences involving the mascots is you can actually have one of the characters visit your hotel room to deliver milk and cookies right before you go to bed. I'm not sure if they still do this or not because, you know, COVID. One last thing, something that's very interesting about these mascots is that ever since the 2010 redesign, Great Wolf Lodge has been very strict with what events these mascots can attend. Before this, the old Wiley would go to pretty much any event that was for kids or families, and while that still happens from time to time, it's not as common as it once was. But there was one time the Great Wolf characters went anywhere they wanted to, and that was during the Wolf Your World Tour in 2013. This was a promotion Great Wolf Lodge did by sending its mascots to different places around North America. They visited places such as children's hospitals, news channels, the White House, and on one instance, Violet actually visited a Great Wolf superfan's house. Talk about awesome! Over the next few years, the Great Wolf Kids characters would continue to bring joy to everyone who came to visit. But nearly a decade later, things were about to change for the worst. It didn't involve the characters themselves, but rather, the mascots. Make Great Wolf Lodge your drive-to destination for family fun. Bringing families together guides everything we do. It's why we created the Paw Pledge. It's our program focused on health and safety, so you can focus on your family. Sure, there are water slides, games, and plenty of adventure, but we're here for more. We're here so you can relax, connect, and grow closer than ever before. Stay safe while you play. Plan your Great Wolf Lodge getaway today. In 2019, something bad happened. Something that wasn't necessary, and something that no one asked for. The company decided to redesign their mascot costumes. Now at first you're probably thinking, it's not going to be that bad. Well, I'm going to stop you right there, because just look at how they massacred my boy Wiley. God, this is terrible. Okay, so if these mascot suits were created before the older costumes, then they would have been fine. But since they came out after, they are not good. I mean, just look at what they did to Wily. He's now slimmer, and his head is rounder and smoother. It's just an off-model mess. Not to mention his wide-open mouth, which looks really creepy, but that's where the person inside looks out of. So at this point, you're probably like, oh, Nathan, you're exaggerating. The costumes aren't that bad. Well, just wait until you see the other characters. Moving on to Violet, she looks just as bad as Wily does. She also has a large, wide-open mouth, but for some reason, they gave her a completely different outfit than what she normally wears. Instead of a purple shirt with khakis, Violet now wears a purple dress with pants. Basically the exact same outfit as the Rockstar version of Helen Henny from Chuck E. Cheese's. She no longer wears Crocs, but now wears a pair of generic purple shoes. I really don't know why the costume designers gave her this outfit instead of her traditional outfit. Which, by the way, I actually did know the company that made the costumes, but I completely forgot now, and I cannot remember the company... As for the other characters, they didn't get new costumes as terrible as the wolves did, but they're still a downgrade from the past costumes. Oliver is basically the same as before, but now he's slimmer, and for some reason they made his head massive. Like Wily and Violet's heads were big too, but Oliver's head is even larger, and since it's so big it makes him taller than the other characters, which should not be accurate. But if you thought Oliver had a big head, wait until you see Brinley. Brinley's head is absolutely massive, even bigger than Oliver's. They really tried to make him look like Winnie the Pooh, and that face is very off-putting. I actually don't mind the inclusion of a shirt, 
even though it's not accurate to his design. It makes him look a little more like a lifeguard. And finally, Sammy the Squirrel, who in my opinion has the best redesign out of all the characters. Yes, her face is really creepy, but I do like her outfit, which is a yellow shirt and a blue overall dress with paint stains on them. They decided to make her an artist, and as an artist myself, I approve. This is probably why Sammy comes out the most, since her redesign is the best, but I still prefer the original design. Now some of you guys probably think I'm just a hater, and that I'm the only one who hates these redesigns. But you would be wrong, because other people don't like them either. Pretty much any time somebody mentions the old and new costumes together, most say that the older costumes are much better, and these new costumes aren't good. So why are these costumes considered bad? Well aside from everything I talked about earlier, it's mainly because these costumes are very cheap looking. Like the older costumes you could tell are much higher quality than these newer costumes, just by looking at the materials used in their construction. And I think Great Wolf Lodge is aware of the fact people don't like these costumes too much, since they aren't used as much as the older costumes were. Like yeah, they did the same things all the other mascot suits did, but they didn't do anything new or attend any public events except for a few. Really, the characters are used more on social media where they appear in videos either doing a craft, promoting something, or doing a cringy TikTok dance. Ugh. And that brings us to today. As of July 2022, these are the Great Wolf Lodge mascots being used, despite their noticeable flaws. But we're not quite done yet, as there's one more thing I want to talk about before I end this video, and it's pretty major. In July 2021, it was announced that Great Wolf Lodge had created a brand new entertainment department that will work on animated projects based off Great Wolf Lodge. Some of the things mentioned include interactive storybooks, animated shorts about each of the Great Wolf characters, and the big one, a brand new movie called The Great Wolf Pack. That's right, the Great Wolf Lodge characters are getting their own movie, and it's actually got some interesting talent attached to it. The director is Chris Bailey, who worked on the absolute masterpiece known as Garfield the Movie. Julia Pistor, Pistor? is executive producing the film, and she was also an executive producer on the first Spongebob Squarepants movie. And the writer is Kent Redeker, who wrote several shows including the Disney Junior show Doc McStuffins. It wasn't until October of 2021 that we got some more information on the project, including our first looks at the characters, and oh god... Okay, so I know I talked a lot of crap about the 2019 costumes, but wow, they are better than these designs. But I'm not completely losing hope, because maybe they will look better when they're actually animated and moving, since the animation studio behind this movie is Six Point Harness, who also made the Oscar-winning short film Hair Love, which is actually pretty good. So maybe not all is lost with the Great Wolf Pack's animation. But really, the main reason I'm not a big fan of these character designs is because they don't really remind me of Great Wolf Lodge. Like, if you look at the actual resort characters compared to the movie designs, they look like completely different characters. It's like comparing Apples to Oranges, or Avenger Chuck to Rockstar Chuck. They don't look like the Great Wolf Lodge characters at all. They look more like furries, or fursuits, or fursonas, whatever you want to call them. But going over each of the character designs, not only did they receive new looks, but they also received new outfits. Wiley now sports a red jacket and blue pants, Violet wears a purple sweatshirt with a lighter purple skirt, black tights, and an interesting hairstyle. Oliver no longer wears glasses and now wears a green shirt, but he did keep his brown shorts. Brindley now wears a red shirt with blue shorts and a backpack, and Sammy now wears a yellow shirt with blue jeans. Along with new designs, they also announced who would be voicing the characters in the movie. Now, these aren't A-list celebrities, but they are still voice actors. And now here's the part where I'm going to start mispronouncing names. Brandon James Winkler will voice Wiley. Maya Tuttle will voice Violet. Oogie Banks will voice Oliver. Dante Nui, I don't know how to pronounce that, will voice Sammy. 
and Greg Vincengaria will voice Brinley. I don't know any of these people because they mostly do voice work for anime and video games, both of which I'm not too familiar with. And finally, the plot, which is pretty much all about the Great Wolf characters traveling to different worlds where they have to learn how to work together to get through problems they get in each world. Again, not really related to Great Wolf, but it still sounds entertaining. The movie is supposed to release in the summer of 2022. However, it's now July, and we still haven't gotten any updates on this film. It is said to be in post-production right now, but so far we haven't gotten a trailer or any kind of animation or mentioned by Great Wolf themselves, so it's probably delayed. But that leads to my next question. Where exactly will this be released on? I'm fairly certain it's not going to release in theaters, since Great Wolf Lodge isn't as recognizable as something like McDonald's, and it could be a box office bomb. And two, I mean come on, the animation isn't theater quality, and there's no A-list actors involved. It'll probably go to something like Netflix or Amazon Prime or Hulu or some other streaming service. Or maybe it'll go straight to video and be sold exclusively at Great Wolf Lodges, like what Chuck E. Cheese did with their movie. Something interesting to note is that Great Wolf said in an interview that depending on how well the movie is received, these character designs could end up replacing the current character designs at the resorts. Meaning these guys will be retired and a new batch of costumes based on these characters will debut. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Either way, I'm pretty excited for this movie. I'll definitely check it out when it eventually does release. But it seems Great Wolf might have a bright future. And with that, this concludes the history of Great Wolf Lodge characters. And there you have it. The history of all the mascots and characters of Great Wolf Lodge. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video, sorry for its length, there was a lot to talk about and it was hard to condense it all into one video, but I'm glad I made it work. If you have any questions let me know in the comment section down below, please like, share, and subscribe, and comment down below which of the Great Wolf mascots is your favorite. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on the History Of series. Bye bye! Arroo!